This is that dreaded report. It's an 8%, it's a 10%. Uh, Marla had a, a scarier one even that, and they're a no. So, so tell me what that discussion looked like. Yeah, so I, this was happened recently. I actually sat on the test for a little bit because I wasn't quite sure. I wanted to make sure when I approached her with this, um, it went well and I had recommendations for her. So her overall risk was 50, 48.5%. Mm. So that's overall years, you know, beginning till year 10. Year five, which she's coming up on, and that's why we did the test, is 17%. So I have a very high risk patient with a no result. All right, so those are the ones that you're like, ah, what do I do? So obviously staying on this, uh, on her regimen of endocrine therapy was not going to help her. So I, I'm certainly not gonna continue on, have her continue on. But what we did is we talked about what we could do, right? What what is it that she can do to reduce her risk of recurrence? Now, we know in breast cancer, um, we only um, do any you know, scans for symptomology. So we talked about lifestyle changes. We talked about uh, a plant-based diet, exercise, minimal alcohol. And that was a little empowering for her to say, okay, you know what, and she, she lives, lives a pretty healthy lifestyle. So when we ended the conversation, it was actually a positive conversation. We, I, we took the time to talk this through and um, she did take it better than I thought she would. Um, I had one other one years ago that um, it was very terrifying for her, but she is still not going to be doing wonderful. So that, that's what I did. So we kind of took the negative in that she's a high result would not benefit, and we spun it to say, okay, but this is what we can do to help you reduce your risk. Most of the time, I must say, the patient really takes it well because they've about just have had it with all the side effects. So, um, and everything that Marla said um, is what proceeds, you know, we talk about, well, now that you don't have the pill as a backup, this is when we need you to put on your big, girls' pants and do all of these things, which are easier said than done, but you know, they are more encouraged to do that because they don't have to deal with the side effects of the um, either tamoxifen or AI, either one. All right. So I think we've all been after our patients. You know, we know that weight loss is good for you. We know exercise, mm -hmm. but some of my patients at this point are still smoking a pack a day. <laughs> Maybe we should really, you know, put our nose to the grindstone and you know, maybe those two glasses of wine every night with dinners, maybe not your best decision. So let's work on some of these other things because this part of your therapy is done. It's not gonna benefit you. And certainly we have the rest of those side effects that we can avoid. So this is almost just like the one you were showing us last night, Myra. Hers was, it was an 11.1%. Yeah, exactly. exactly the same. So, so we have to get comfortable sitting on the data that says this is their risk, okay? but they don't benefit. So all the bone density issues, all the uh, libido issues, vaginal dryness, the arthralgias, get them off their drug. They're getting zero benefit. This is like giving chemo to an oncotype of zero. They have no benefit despite our discomfort, right? Because we like these people. We want them to do well. And so if you ever need to look at the data, your, um, your MSL, your reps can get you these individual clinical trials because transatom is really impressive. And it was a tamoxifen five or 10 year data. It wasn't even AI. So, and they were all node positive. 